It's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is shovel. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we can use this verb. The first way you might hear the verb shovel used is to mean to move a substance with a shovel. Um, and a little later, we're going to take a look at the noun form of this word and look at some pictures. So uh, if the noun form, a shovel here, doesn't make much sense, just keep with me and I promise the, the pictures will help a little bit later. So the idea here is we're using this tool to move something. Uh, many times people who work in a garden or in their yard, they might use a shovel to dig uh, some dirt or uh, dig a spot in order for them to uh, put in a plant or a bush or a flower, something of that nature. A second way you might hear the verb shovel used is to mean to remove snow from an area using a shovel. And this second definition is largely why I picked this verb. It is the winter in the Midwestern part of the United States where I live, and a rather large snowstorm is moving into my area, and I think we're going to be hearing this verb a great deal over the next 24 hours. You should know that shovel is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all I need to do is add ing to form shoveling. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by just adding ed. The base verb, shovel, o, o, ends in this voiced l sound. So our ed is going to make a d sound. Shoveled. Shoveled. I just have one phrasal verb for us to look at uh, today connected to the verb shovel, and I want to note that it's a bit informal. Uh, sometimes this gets labeled as slang, but the phrasal verb to shovel something into generally means to put or push something uh, somewhere very quickly and to do it in large quantities. And the way this phrasal verb gets used often is in connection to food and the idea that someone is eating very, very quickly, um, but they're also eating a large quantity very quickly. Let's take a look at an example of this phrasal verb in a sentence. When we go to the fancy restaurant tonight, please do not shovel food into your mouth. Now, this might be something a parent says to a child. Uh, many children want to eat fast and, so that they can go back to playing um, or, yeah, just have fun, right, instead of being at, at a dinner table. So the idea here is have good manners. Generally, if you're shoveling food into your mouth, you are not exhibiting good table manners. Now, let's keep practicing with the verb shovel. Uh, and today, we'll practice using the imperative and the past perfect. Remember, the imperative is rather special uh, because there is not a stated subject in the sentence. Um, otherwise, in pretty much every other uh, proper, complete sentence in the English language, we have subjects, the person or the thing that is responsible for the action. Here, the subject is implied. It's either you singular or you plural. So you could be speaking to one person or many people and use the imperative. Really what you're doing is you're giving them a command. You're telling them to do something. So we're going to start the imperative with just the base verb. But some people worry uh, that they might not sound very nice when they're giving commands like this. So we could soften it by starting with please. You can put please at the beginning or the end of an imperative, but you don't need to do it in both places. So let's take a look at an affirmative example. Please shovel mulch into a wheelbarrow. Now mulch might be a different word for you, so I put a picture down at the bottom of the screen here. Um, they are generally like little pieces of uh, bark, uh, maybe leaves and other tree pieces, 
Um, you will see them many times um, at playgrounds, or you might see them kind of surrounding trees. Sometimes it's done because it sort of looks pretty or appealing, um, but there's, I, I think, a function related to like keeping moisture in the soil. So here, someone is instructing, move this substance using a shovel. Now, if we want to make a negative imperative, we're going to start with do not or the contraction don't and then the base verb. And again, you can add please to the beginning or the end of this if you want to make it just a little more polite. Here's an example of a negative imperative. Don't shovel the walkway until it stops snowing. Um, in large snowstorms, sometimes you'll see people go out and try and do a little bit every few hours thinking that's going to be easier than just moving several inches of snow at one time. Now let's take a look at the past perfect. We're using this uh, verb tense to note that something was completed at a time in the past before another action. So uh, here, to make the past perfect, we're going to use the past form of had, I'm sorry, of have, which is had, and then we'll use the participle form of the verb. And this structure is going to be the same no matter what our subject is, whether it's I, you, we, they, he, she, or it, it's going to be had, and then our uh, participle form. So here's an example sentence. Someone had shoveled our driveway before we got home. So here, had shoveled is noting that that action was completed before the action of arriving at home. If I want to make a negative past perfect sentence, I need to insert not after had. You may hear native speakers use the contraction form hadn't. Here is another example. Most of the people on our block hadn't shoveled their sidewalks two days after the storm. Finally, if I want to make a yes or no question in the past perfect, I'm going to start with had, then I'll have my subject, and then the participle form of the verb. Had you shoveled out a parking space? So uh, all three examples in the past perfect here are connected to snow and our second meaning. They might be things you hear about if you are also living um, in a cold uh, place right now uh, where there's a lot of snow. We have just one related word to look at today, and uh, you're going to notice the spelling is exactly the same as our verb, as is our pronunciation. It's just the noun form, shovel. And I told you at the beginning, our verb used the noun, uh, or I'm sorry, our verb definition used this noun. And you might have been wondering, what do I mean? I've included a couple pictures here, but a shovel is a tool that has a broad and generally sort of flat blade, um, but the sides are turned up just a bit. And its function or its purpose is to move substances. So um, you can see in this picture here, we've got a shovel that might be more common to see with yard work. Okay? And then the picture on the left here, clearly this is a snow shovel. Those tend to be longer. Uh, or, or wider, I guess I should say, um, in hopes that you're going to be able to move more snow. You could try and use this shovel to move snow, but it's not going to happen very quickly. Um, and this shovel, as you can tell, it's much heavier uh, because it's metal here. These are usually plastic. Um, they might, might be made of other substances as well. Um, and that's because the snow can be quite heavy all by itself, and you don't need the extra weight. So here's an example sentence with the noun form shovel. Is there a shovel in the garage? And one sort of clue here that's telling me that this is a noun is the article A that comes right before it. So uh, that can be a helpful, helpful hint if you're not sure if a particular word is being used as a noun or a verb. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.